Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We do, from time to time, talk to people on this program who are life coaches, help direct people through challenges in their lives, make them more productive and and more connected with, with life in general. A little bit different today. We're going to focus on guys, and we're going to focus on Christian religion. And this gentleman has made it his life's work to help people, specifically men in that territory, just navigate life, relationships, everything. And we're going to learn more about Stillwater Christian Life Coaching from Henry Engo Jr., who joins us. Henry, welcome. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, it's good to have you here. This is a this is definitely unique, and I, I'm glad we're talking because there isn't a lot of support for men in general, and specifically from a a, a Christian standpoint. Is that why you you began this uh, this endeavor? Well, yeah, yes, uh, mainly because uh, I started feeling disenfranchised from the rest of America. I mean, I'm a I'm a United States Navy veteran and all, and I started to feel like I didn't even belong here anymore. The way uh, I, I, to the lack of a term, the secular society has moved away from masculinity and men, and and uh, and because of that, I said, you know, I can't be the only one. I started talking to a lot of people and find out I wasn't the only one, and that's why I started, I started doing this. I think it's challenging for a lot of men because we've all grown up being told to not cry. Big boys don't cry. Stop! Don't don't do that. Right. And. It's it's shut down our emotions to the point where we feel we can't express them and express ourselves. Uh, so I have to imagine this is this is very very beneficial for for a lot of men. Well, it is, and and to be honest with you, I, I grew up with an Italian dad and a, and a Cuban mom, so uh, they were both very very big on being uh, masculine and strong and and the man being in charge. But at the same time, uh, you know, we we're also very emotional type people, so. Uh, it, it's really difficult to try to navigate that, especially in a society now where people just don't appreciate men who take charge a lot of times. You know, when, when a situation needs somebody to step up and take charge, um, that's, that's what we do. And that doesn't that doesn't take away from women in any way, shape or form. It doesn't take away from how important women are in society, especially when it comes to raising children and and uh, and, and keeping men together because men need women to stay strong. That's that's part of who we are. So. Let's look at the differences between life coaching and and therapy. How does that differ? Well, the, mostly it is a, is a there's a le a legal difference uh, to be a counselor or a therapist. It requires uh, a bachelor's um, a master's degree, and then a, usually requires a master's degree and and then a license. It all depends on your state, but you have to go through a test and licensing and everything else. With life coaching, it's effectively. Um, just, just being able to give people advice and, and learn stuff. Now, I, I personally happen to have a, uh, I'm certified through the American Association of Christian Counselors to be a life coach. I'm certified through them. And I also just uh, just now finished up my bachelor's degree in uh, behavioral health science. So I do have the credentials to be a good life coach. Uh, but but technically, there really isn't, there isn't much to, to that. And uh and, and it's it's basically just knowing that you could give advice to people that that have you, where you have been and where they're going and you can help them out. So let's let's rewind. Let's talk about where you have been. Let's your journey. Let's hear that uh, to the point where you are here. Well, like I said, I grew up. I'm the oldest of five kids, and I grew up. I grew up in a, in a basically I call it a lot. It's a, it's basically a Latino household because it's Italian and Spanish, and there's not really much difference between them. It's still pretty Latino both ways. And um and as the oldest as the oldest child especially the oldest son I was kind of in charge of everything when my dad was working my mom my mom took care of everybody but I was in charge of the kids if if my sisters or brothers did something stupid I got in trouble for it I was one who was supposed to make sure that they didn't do anything dumb so <laughs> it was that's kind of where it all started was is that I I had to step up and take charge otherwise you know I got in trouble for it and then. As I got older, um, it was I, I got to work with my friends and, and talk to my friends, and we were always looking out for each other. Then when I joined the Navy, that was the biggest that was the biggest step because as I joined the Navy, um, I had people working for me, and uh, when as as I as I was in for a little while, I started having people working for me. And in, and in the military, you're not just in charge of their job; you're in charge of their entire lives. You have to be there to help them with, if they start having trouble with their marriages, if they're having trouble with their kids, if they're having trouble with their careers. 
with school, anything that they're doing, whether it's inside or outside the Navy, you're responsible for these people's lives. You're responsible for helping them. So this is where a lot of that started coming from and seeing all the good that I could do helping these guys with the proper research. I mean, it wasn't just stuff I made up out of my head. You know, I looked at what was the proper way to do things, what was the right way to do stuff. And I started guiding these guys. And 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 I was very successful at it because um, there's an old saying, I'm, I, I, I'm at a loss as to who said it originally, but uh, I, I believe it was Zig Ziglar who said it, that people don't 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 care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that was where I started. That was is knowing that I could care. And then from there, uh, uh, I became a single dad for a lot of years. I was a single dad of four kids for a lot of years. That took a lot of a lot of leadership because that was tough. I had I had four teenagers at one point. And uh, <laughs> and if you've ever had one teenager, you know how much of a challenge that is. So juggling four teenagers at, by yourself was definitely uh, definitely a challenge. And, and, uh, and, and talk about needing faith. I, you know, well, I'm a, a single dad of one, so I yeah. can't, can't imagine. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah. So, wow. And, and then, and then the thing is, is most of the and this is this was back in the in the in the early 2000s, uh, late 90s, early 2000s. So the the thing is, is is back then there wasn't a lot of programs to help single dads. It was all about single moms. Single moms could get all the help they needed, and all that they had. They, the businesses would bend over backwards to give them time off and do this and do that. As a single dad, nobody wanted to hear it. I was supposed to be at work. I suppose, and nobody wanted. Nobody really cared. So I, I, it really took a lot working with the church and and having a lot of friends to help me out. And it, it made a big difference. So in in your in your endeavor to create this this counseling for men spiritually connected, what was what do you think the biggest obstacle was? Well, the biggest obstacle with dealing with men is uh, more than anything is them is the men themselves. Um, we are, we are taught that we're supposed to be the ones to, 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 you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, all those, all those good, uh, all those good little sayings. And, and, and a lot of times men don't realize how important it is to be part of a team and how important it is to be part of a group and have group support. Even if they're not doing anything for you, at least the verbiage is there. They're, they're speaking to you. They're, you're knowing that what you're doing is right and they support you morally. And, and a lot of men don't realize that how important that really is. I mean, anybody who's been on a team, like a football team or anything like that, basketball, baseball, they know how important a team is. But a, lo a lot of the men that don't play those sports, you know, past high school, don't realize how important that is in life as well. And coaching. I mean, you look at guys like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Yet, every, you know, he had a coach to let him know, you know, I'm messing up. What do I do to correct it? What I, and this guy couldn't play basketball for nothing, but he could tell Michael Jordan exactly what to do to correct his problem. So so coaching is very important to have somebody there in your corner. Well, it's super important, too, for us to realize that we can't do it alone. We're exactly. social creatures, right? Yep. And But men don't seem, for some reason, uh, the past American culture never, never really taught men that they needed to be in a group. That they needed to that they needed to do it on their own and, and and that they were weak if they couldn't handle it on their own and and that's why we have so many men that are alcoholics and drug addicts and depressed and you know what is it 22 22 veterans a day these are guys who are in war and yet 22 of them a day are committing suicide i mean it's it's ridiculous because they they just don't understand how important being in a group needs to be just for life there is an epidemic of loneliness in this country and the number one segment and this blows my mind, it, it, are men in their 20s, upper 20s and 30s. You look at that and you might say, I've, you know, they, they're hanging out together, maybe playing ball, playing cards, you know, hanging out, whatever it might be, but the complete opposite. The the And you would think it may be seniors that are suffering loneliness. No, it's men in that, in that uh, demographic. That's right. It's, uh, the, and, and, and it's funny because in the prime, you would think at the primary of life, that was the, that's the time where they're going to, they're right. enjoying things and it, and it's not it's it's when they're really starting to suffer because that's when it that early 20s part is when they're transitioning from being kids to becoming adults and that transition is where is where you start realizing how much help should i have how many how many people should i get advice from i should be able to do this on my own why can't i do it on my own and i actually have i've uh through my schoolwork and everything have i've seen empirical studies where um where men who are people in general, but men as well, especially men who are supported by their church, who are part of a church group, who are involved with Christian uh, youth groups and Christian and uh, Christian work groups, like going around and helping in, in, inside, 
that they're not suffering loneliness, that they are together, that 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 is much it's somewhere in the vicinity of 75 percent less of a chance of suffering depression, anxiety and substance abuse uh, because they're attached to a church group and because of their faith. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, but this is this is important for people to understand that. Tell me about your spiritual journey connected to faith. Well, <laughs> I, my 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 mom was a my mom was actually going to was going to be a nun before she ma- met my dad. And she ended up getting married, and um, my mother raised us basically in the church. I mean, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I had priests. My brother's a Catholic priest. My nephew's a Catholic priest. I, I'm I am no longer a practicing Catholic. I'm a Christian. I'm a, 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 a I don't know a non denominational Christian, but uh, and that's my own personal choice there. But uh, mm-hmm. But it, that doesn't take away anything from from the way I grew up. Uh, and, sure. and it was oh, we were always surrounded by, uh, you know, the, the old uh, you'll remember God's watching, you know. <laughs> and uh, and then as you get older, you start realizing that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, as a kid, you start you know you're always like, oh my goodness, you know, somebody's watching me all the time. But now, as you get older, you start realizing that's not a bad thing. That stops you from getting in trouble when you realize that that you have somebody to answer to eventually. So uh, that my spiritual journey basically walked through that, and then I have a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, spiritual experience as far as uh, as far as uh, angels and things like that are concerned. But it's been it's been an amazing life, and 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 from this point on, I realize how much that I've survived as a as a teenager. You know, as a teenager, because I was a I was a bit a bit of a rowdy kid. I I did you know I did my share of getting not not trouble as in stealing and stuff like that, but. I did a lot of partying and a lot of a lot of fun stuff, and, and especially when I was in the Navy, I was I had you know I had money and I joined the Navy at eighteen years old, so all of a sudden I had money and freedom and and basically just you know went wild, and uh, realizing that it was that it was God who brought me through that to this to to where I am now and how much how much He's helped me to through through all those years is when I realized that you know I have to give back now. It's time for me to start helping people and teaching them how to get past those, those kind of crazy ideas and, and move on with your life and through God. So I, I want to go a little deeper based on just what you said there about God. You pivoted from a Catholic practicing Catholic to a, a non-denominational Christian, right? Has your view of God changed? Um, I, I, I want to say yes. And the reason I say yes is because I, I'm not saying it's, it's like this for everybody. But for me, it was because uh, my view of God was always, you know, was always like a disciplinarian. You know, uh, this is just I went to school. I went to Catholic high school, so I always had the nuns on top of me. And, mm-hmm. and it was always it was always seemed like God was a disciplinarian. And um, it wasn't until um, I started I started uh, talking with uh, non-denominational pastors where I started realizing that that Jesus is your brother, he's your friend, and, and he wants to help you through these things. It's not like do it or I'm going to get you type of thing. And it, and I'm not saying all Catholics experience that, but it just seems the way that I experienced it. And and when I started when I started um, accepting Jesus as, as my friend and as my brother, and as I and, and started accepting God as my father and not as my and not as my judge, you know, I I started realizing how much different life is and and how much how much more freedom you feel. You know, and, and and all of a sudden you start feeling like it almost felt like I was never good enough. Where now I feel like I can't be bad enough. I mean, I everybody sins. I'm not saying I don't sin because you know, according to you know, we, we sin. It's just it's just life. But it just feels like that once you once you realize that 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 God understands that you got to be helped through this. That He's got basically Jesus is coaching you the same way as as I try to coach other people. Is just that's when you start realizing, hey, you know, it's it's really not as bad as everybody, you know I I think it is. So the reason not- I, I ask that, I can, I can relate to you in many ways. I was raised Catholic, right. and up until even a year and a half ago, I would read at church. I would be a lector. They would ask me, hey, you have a you know good voice. Can you read? I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. They put me on the schedule, and in a great parish, every two weeks, and I would read uh, you know, from the gospel, but many times I didn't even know what I was reading. You know, I would even have to study the night before to make sure the pronunciations were right. And I just found myself not fitting into this formal box of religion where you got to do it this way. Then now, you know, hand over to here, then hand over to here. And if you don't do it right, the priest gives you a look and all of that. And and that just, it didn't fit me anymore. And a friend mentioned a Christian church, started going there, started going with my daughter. And it just felt I was getting more from it. Right. And the relatability 
And even at the Catholic Church, I used to draw cartoons as a kid, wanted to be a syndicated cartoonist. I still remember a sermon that a priest who since retired years ago, and this is like 15 years ago, delivered because it made a mark on me. I related to it, but I found myself not relating so much more to the Catholic Church. That's my personal opinion. Nothing right. wrong with and, it. And, Wonderful and, people. Well, yeah. And and there is a, there is a beauty uh, in the pageantry and the, and the respect that the Catholic Church shows in their ma- in the mass. Sure. And, and and there's a lot of stuff that's involved that's just that's just absolutely beautiful that that the way they worship God and, and I agree. Just, there is, you know that part of it is wonderful. But for the everyday son for the everyday you know once a week type of stuff where you go and you want to be part of a community. I never really felt like it was part of the community. It almost felt like you had to fight your way in to be part of the community. Where the church I'm in now, they they just bring people. They say, "Come on in," you know, you know, we'll, you know, we'll see where we can fit you in. And and there's and there are. I mean, there are some things like you know, there is the church I go to. They're very particular about people who do the worshiping. Like you have to make sure that your life is at least generally in line. You you uh, you can't be living with your girlfriend. You have to be married. Um, you have to be baptized. You know, it, it doesn't have to be in that particular church, but you have to be a baptized Christian. Uh, things like that. You know that that you know they, they want to make sure they're not bringing in gangsters and and, and people who are doing the wrong things. So uh, so because it's a, the reputation. That's for the worship. That's not for the people who attend. That's for the people who actually uh, do the speaking, uh, the music, the musicians, the people that are involved with the yep. show, that kind of stuff. When it comes to attending the services, everybody's invited. It doesn't matter what's going on. Like, come on in and you know, hear the word of God. So it's 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 a it's a pretty it's a pretty nice church that I go to. It's it's actually where I kind of got the name too because uh, the town I live in is still that. Well, I live in just outside of a town called Stillwater, Pennsylvania, which was made famous by NCIS. <laughs> but uh, I live just outside of Stillwater, Pennsylvania, and the church that I go to is Stillwater Christian Church. So I kind of I kind of took the name. I love the name Stillwater. I thought that was excellent for for a life coaching or counseling name. The name Stillwater, and so I took that's why I took that on as the name for the business. Well, you know, it kind of translates a lot to people that that may call upon you for help because they're floating in turbulent water. There's so much going on in my life. I just want it to be still. And you know, along that point, I remember I used to go to church, and I'm I'm going to say this is only. This is only about four years ago, maybe three. I would go to church and they would say, peace be with you. Peace right. be with you. And I'm, I'm up there in age. I'd still look at it and say, what are you talking about with the peace thing? Where, where, where are we going with this? What, until I realized I didn't have any peace. Yeah. <laughs> until I realized it. And it's like, well, now I get you. Now I got it. That's what that piece is, the inner piece. I got it. Uh, And I'm sure that's what a lot of people, a lot of men specifically, are looking for when they turn to you, Henry, uh, in terms of a a, in terms of coaching. What are you hearing from from men now? Uh, Mostly, mostly it's it's uh, in opposition to a lot of stuff that's going on in society today. I mean, with all the uh, with all now. Um, I joke around. I often say that God is a true liberal because he lets you live the way you want to live. You just can't get into heaven unless you live the way he wants you to live. You know, he doesn't, he's not going to strike you down with lightning because you're doing the wrong thing. He just lets you do the wrong thing. And then you just don't get into heaven. I mean, it's as simple as that. So that's why I often say God is a true liberal in that way. He lets you live whatever life you want to live. It's your choice. Um, However, what I'm hearing from a lot of men nowadays has got to, has got to do with, uh, you know, Everybody was so against. Originally, they started kicking the the Christianity and 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 Jesus and, and got out of schools because they didn't want uh, people being their children being forced to hear prayers or listen to prayers or being forced to pray, which nobody ever did. But they they didn't want their children being forced to pray, and so the the, the Christians were forced out of the out of out of school that way. But now with Christianity out of school, they're forcing the kids to to listen to. Uh, p- drag queens and and um, and books that are that are just sexually inappropriate for, in any form for grade schoolers, and and so they're for, they're they're doing exactly what they were trying to stop Christians from doing, saying that Christians can't force their beliefs, yet they'll force their beliefs. So what I'm hearing a lot from men is is how do we fight back with this? How do we do this? And and how do we live with the fact that we have to we have to fight this fight? You know, it's something that has to be done. So uh, that that's a lot of of what I'm hearing, and mm. and also, and also, um, what a lot of men, what a lot of people don't realize with Christianity, people saying Christians are under attack. 
And the truth of the matter is, it's the other way around. What people don't realize is that um, Jesus said that the gates of hell will not prevail. Well, the gates are a defensive mechanism, not a not an offensive mechanism. Gates are defensive. And what happens is, is when 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 evil gets a hold of something, it sets up the gates. And we, have, as Christians, are supposed to be marching on that gate and telling them this is not the right way to do. And, what is it, and so it's actually Christians that are on the march. And when we say Christians are being attacked, it's it's actually evil fighting back. It's not because mm. God God eventually takes over the world and 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 the gates. You know, we, we read if you read if you read the book, you know, at the end we win. So it's just uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of a. Uh, it's just a matter of time at this at this point. So this what I'm mostly hearing from men is how do how do we fight this fight without getting in trouble by the law? That's the hardest part. And I said, well, you know, Christians have been getting in trouble by the law. I mean, if you look at all all the saints, with the exception of uh, with the exception of John, uh, all the saints were 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 martyred. You know, they were all killed for their faith. So there's really no way out of it. <laughs> you know, you're going to get in trouble with the law. It's that simple. Well, I know that that God has been a driving force in your life. Yes. For many years. Um, who else? Who who was a mentor to you? Uh, well, uh, starting out as a kid, my mother was actually my, one of my biggest mentors. My mother was very, very strong. My mother and I have a very good relationship. And um, I mean, she was only she was only uh, she was only 22 when she had me. So uh, she was very she was a very young mom when I had her. And and and, and I was a very I was a very uh, playful and, and, and very active kid. So she really she really enjoyed that fact. And my mother played a big role in my life, forming my personality, being uh, and that kind of stuff. My dad, my dad was good when it came to uh, when it came to teaching me how to do stuff like fix the car and do the stuff in the house and things like that. But my dad was very distant. He 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 used to it was it was the wife and the kids, you know, <laughs> as opposed to my mom who who had an individual relationship. We seem to have lost him. Yeah, I don't know what uh, happened to Henry there. I want to share with everybody, if you are uh, a man and looking for Christian counseling, here's the website, stillwaterchristlifecoach.com. I want to make sure I have that correct. Let me look at it on the screen. Yeah, stillwaterchristlife.com. Uh Interesting. We're in a conversation here, and uh, technically, Henry uh, disappeared, <laughs> and we're out of time to get him back here. But uh, oh, well, I think he's back there. Yeah, I I'm sorry. My, for some reason, my internet went out. I live in yeah. I live in rural Pennsylvania, so that happens from time to time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's maybe it's a sign. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not kidding at that uh, point. Um, we're we're just about out of time. I was given your website. I want to make sure I have it right. Stillwaterchristlifecoach.com. Yes. That's Excellent. Right. And yep. if if somebody is listening to this, it resonates. If you're a man, you want that type of of connection in in your coaching. Uh, is it a free consult if somebody just wants to start a dialogue? Absolutely. With you? Uh, the, the originally, uh, the original consult is a free fifteen to twenty minutes to see because you know you can't you, you're not going to you're not going to uh, you're not going to be able to go with everybody. Somebody had you know. Uh, every now and then you're going to, you're going to, you're not going to go with something. So you have to consult with them to see if you meet person to person, if there's something you can do to help them, if they get along with you, you have, you kind of have to feel each other out. And that's just not me. They have to, they have to like me too. So it's got to be both ways. We have to trust each other. Um, and the, so the first 20 minutes is free after that, um, because it is life coaching and not counseling, uh, the insurance doesn't get involved. So it would be out of pocket. So I try to keep the cost. Uh, I try to keep the cost at like, Thirty to forty dollars an hour, depending on what the person what what the person uh, means in that concept. Gotcha. Um, love what you do. There's a place for it, and uh, I hear it from so many of the men that uh, I'm connected with that are looking for direction, support. Uh, which there's not a lot of it out there for right. men. So, uh, Henry, great having you on here. Really appreciate it, and uh, thanks for all your insight. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Can I? Well, just one more thing, real quick. Go right ahead. I just wanted to I just wanted to let uh, say everything that we do. I do do small group classes. So if there's people out there that want to do small group, I do men's small group classes, parenting small group classes, and also uh, um, and and marriage small group classes. So I do I do do work with people for marriage counseling and 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 uh, or coaching and and parenting as well as men's groups. And uh, my wife is also a um, a teaching coach. She teaches uh, she coaches and 
is developing a program for uh, for preschool teachers. And she's a, she's actually the uh, preschool director here at the local y YMCA. She's the preschool education director. Wow. So both of us do coaching and stuff like that. And those are the kind of things I do. So I just and wanted to just want to put that out there that it's not just we do we do mostly work with men. I work mostly work with men, but we also do parenting and and marriage counseling as well. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, while you may be in Pennsylvania, you're available anywhere on the planet virtually, yeah, right? I, I have a Zoom. I have a Zoom site, so we can just like we're doing here. I could do with anybody anywhere, and I could do small groups the same way. You know, we could bring everybody in on the Zoom on a small group, and they can come in and, and we can go through the small group programs. Excellent. Uh, great talking with you today. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to say it and mean it. Peace be with you. And peace to you, sir. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.